Renault has confirmed it will cease producing F1 power units at its Viry Châtillon plant from the end of 2025, paving the way for its sports brand Alpine to become a Mercedes customer team. Renault's move, a push for more performance, was championed by its executive advisor Flavio Briatore, with Viry set to focus on a future Alpine supercar and hybrid technologies. Alpine's management confirms its project to transform the site into a center of engineering and high-tech excellence by late 2024, said the statement from Renault. Daniel Ricciardo's F1 career looks to be over, following confirmation last week that Liam Lawson will replace him at RB from Austin. Ricardo, who has since left RB with immediate effect, was drafted in last year to put pressure on Red Bull's Sergio Perez. But the Australian had to be significantly better than teammate Yuki Tsunoda for a shot at a future top drive alongside former teammate Max Verstappen. But across 2024's first 18 races, Tsunoda, who isn't rated by Red Bull for a top seat, beat him 12-6 in qualifying, 9-8 in races that they both finished, and scored 10 more points. Ricardo can move forward with his head held high, having taken solace from standout results this year, like fourth in the Miami Sprint and top 10 scores in Canada, Austria, and Belgium. I felt like every time there was a little bit more pressure on me and the clock was ticking, so to speak, I was able to, to do what I know I'm capable of. So that was good. The 35-year-old's 257 starts puts him 10th on the all-time list, and he has eight wins, three pole positions, and 17 fastest laps across his time with HRT, Renault, McLaren, and Red Bull's two squads. Red Bull Motorsport consultant Dr. Helmut Marco says the brand would love to retain Ricardo despite his killer instinct gone. McLaren has strengthened its ability to read races with news it has lured Red Bull veteran Will Courtney as its new sporting director. Courtney, who will join the Papaya squad from mid-2026 once he's done with his gardening leave, will report to racing director Randeep Singh in a move designed to grow the team's sporting operations as it continues its pursuit of success at the front of the field. Courtney has been with Red Bull for two decades, its head of race strategy since 2010, and is the latest exit from the energy drink squad. His experience, professionalism, and passion for motorsport make him the ideal candidate to lead our F1 sporting function, McLaren team boss Andrea Stella said. <laughs> Sauber boss Mattia Bonotto has provided an update on the squad's 2026 F1 power unit, stating it's progressing well and running on the dyno with some long distances completed. Sauber is set to become Audi's works team from 2026, but updates have been sporadic since the original announcement in 2022. And while Bonotto says things are going well, he admitted there will be a gap to recover given its established rivals. There is an intense program on the dinos in development, and it will be our task to make sure that we can enforce it, speeding up as much as we can, but try to be as competitive as we can be at the start of 2026, Bonotto said. Mercedes has saluted Lewis Hamilton following his milestone 350th F1 start in Singapore, though it hopes to give its outgoing seven-time world champion something to celebrate soon. Hamilton passed fellow champion Kimi Raikkonen for second on the all-time starts list in Singapore, but his landmark race was effectively ruined by the team's gamble to start him on the soft tires, which left Hamilton down in sixth, two places and more than 20 seconds behind his teammate George Russell at the flag. We're coming towards the end of our journey with him and, and these, you know, almost every every weekend is a milestone never to be repeated with Lewis. It's just a shame that, 
that it happened on a weekend where the car was not more bright. And, uh, and my hope is that we won't you know, have to go too far beyond the 350th year. Maybe we can celebrate the 351st yeah. uh, in greater style in Austin in, uh, in a week or two from now. Williams team principal James Valls has defended Franco Colapinto's contentious start in Singapore, which his teammate Alex Albon called a dive bomb over team radio before later softening his stance. Colapinto, who started 12th, gained three places on the opening lap, but the resultant melee at turn one forced Albon to take avoiding action, and he dropped back to 15th before his lap 17 retirement which may be related to a carbon duct linked to the radiators. But while Albon was initially upset about his teammate's move, he later said there was nothing really to criticize after a quick chat with Valls. The case of what others are talking about, I can understand where they were, especially I spent time with Alex afterwards, because from their perspective, all they're looking at is a little bit in their mirror where you're uncertain as to whether there's a large accident coming. I hope now others look in hindsight, especially in a top-down view, and see that what Franco did was keep the car very much in control and position it where he needed to to gain places. Oliver Behrman says he treated his Azerbaijan Grand Prix weekend with Haas as a practice run for his full-time debut in 2025. Behrman, who will join F1's American team next year alongside Esteban Ocon, became the first driver to score points for two different teams in his opening two race starts, with Ferrari in Saudi Arabia and Haas in Baku. But the 19-year-old told F1's official podcast Beyond the Grid his second start with Haas was more about getting up to speed with his future team. I really love the team that I worked with. We got along really, really well, and it went really smoothly. They, they guided me through everything really well, really efficiently. And exactly, this race was like a dry run for next year. Miami has upped its motorsport credentials, with news its international autodrome now features five track configurations for year-round racing. Miami joined the F1 calendar on a 10-year deal from 2022, with Florida's quirky track and event gaining traction and popularity, not just with local fans, but celebrities, upping its profile. And now, race organizers have completed four new inner-loop layouts, each of which has no impact to local traffic or infrastructure, enabling use for racing throughout the year. Ferrari has already confirmed that it will hold its Racing Days event there two weeks after next year's Miami Grand Prix. Outspoken NASCAR champion Kyle Larson could soon get his shot in F1, with McLaren Racing CEO Zach Brown revealing he's in discussions with the 32-year-old over a possible future test. Larson made global headlines in August, when he told selected media he was a better all-round driver than Red Bull's reigning F1 world champion Max Verstappen, raising eyebrows. But Brown, whose team Larson races part-time for in IndyCar, is keen for the Californian to get a maiden F1 test, potentially as part of a NASCAR seat swap between him and young gun Oscar Piastri. McLaren did a similar swap in 2018 when two-time F1 world champion Fernando Alonso got together in Bahrain with seven-time NASCAR Cup Series champion Jimmy Johnson. And Brown wants to see the two codes get together again. I'd love to see Kyle in an F1 car, he said. It is something that we've discussed and something I think will happen down the road. Ferrari may have high hopes for its final upgrade for the season in Austin, but in academy driver Rafael Camera, it already has a winner. After the Brazilian secured the Formula Regional European Championship title last weekend in Barcelona with one round to go. Camera finished third in race one and fourth in the second to secure the European crown. Thanks for watching.
To stay up to speed on all things Formula One, make sure you hit the subscribe button.